Our text, of course, is in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Dear Lord, this morning we have seen how your Bible and 2,000 years of Christian history have condemned the worldly theater. And God, we've seen how even the modern psychologists are now agreeing that it is dangerous to the morality and behavior. And Lord, I do pray that as we continue denouncing and exposing these unfruitful works of darkness, that You'll bring conviction upon households, upon families, upon all that You bring to hear these messages. In the name of Jesus, Amen. In part one this morning, we saw what the Bible says about making provision for the flesh. We examined centuries of Christian warnings against the theater. And as I prayed, we saw how worldly psychologists and others are beginning to agree with the preachers. This reminds me of the late 1960s. After the 1950s, Spock generation said, don't use the rod, don't discipline your children, don't spank your children. And they were spocked instead of spanked. And they grew up to be the rebellious generation of the 60s. You had writers in the New York Times and psychologists change their tune in the late 1960s. And they began to write articles and say, hey, hey, forget what we said. Forget everything. You, you better start disciplining your children. And they began to agree with the preachers. Of course, that didn't last very long. But nevertheless, you had a generation of psychologists that said, you know what? We changed our mind. It created a nation of brats. And you better do something about it. And uh, well, now what they're doing is now that we're starting to reap the effects of what we have sown in these violent, wicked, lewd movies, they're starting to say, uh, the psychologists are starting to say, okay, we now agree that uh, our research, quote, proves that what you see will help determine your behavior. It will certainly influence it. Now, wait a second. Wait a second. What are you going to do when even the directors and producers of some of the most wicked, violent films in modern times have second thoughts? You know, some of these Hollywood liberals are waking up. Now, they go on to show you that they're still liberal. They go on to talk about, well, we admit that I think there's something going on with these wicked movies. So something's going on with the violence in these movies. But they always add, but guns too are bad. And what we need to understand is that guns are neutral. These movies are not neutral. Guns can be used for good or bad. These movies are just plain bad. They had a recent news report where there was this mass stabbing. It would have made the news. It would have been on every newspaper in America, just like the uh, Colorado recent theater tragedy. But it wasn't. You know why? Because somebody had a gun. And somebody went around stabbing people, and he took his gun out and said, freeze. And the fellow froze, dropped his knife, and there was the end of the, end of the story. Nobody else got hurt. Guns And the people, it was so interesting, the people that uh, were, were there that witnessed this mad, crazy fellow with a knife said, we are so thankful somebody had a gun. Isn't that amazing? That doesn't make the news, does it? But what I want you to realize is that although they're still liberal, notice what the Boston Herald says recently. The mass shooting at a Dark Knight Rises screening last week has Hollywood quietly squirming. Why are they squirming? 
What's the matter? Quote, like every person who works in movies and is following this event, I'm asking myself, what are we responsible for? If anything, says Robert Cohen, a director producer of edgy films such as Stealth. Isn't that amazing? He's saying, I'm at least asking myself, are we responsible for some of what's happening in America today? Hey, that's quite amazing, isn't it? Hey, that's quite amazing. Some say we're complicit in this violence, and I'm not sure we are, he said. You're not sure? You mean you created this filth, and you're starting to question that you might be sure? You might be responsible for some of what's wrong with America? Hey, that's quite amazing. That's quite a, I know it's not fall down on the face repentance, but that's quite amazing. Do you understand? But it does give me great pause. And I now have to look deeper. Well, amen. And you better take a good look. And you better listen to what that conscience is saying to you. But not only him, Kurt Sutter, the writer, producer of such TV so shows as Sons of Anarchy and the Ship. You know what's so wonderful? It's wonderful to be a Christian and not know what any of this is. To have never heard it one day in my life. Kurt Sutter, the writer, producer of such shows, is also looking inward. Woke up to the news about shooting, he said in a Twitter message last Friday after 12 people were killed and 58 injured. This kind of thing always makes me question my liberal use of violence in storytelling. Well, good for you. I'm glad. Maybe you'll repent. There's no way you're going to repent unless you begin to examine yourself. Independent producer Harvey Weinstein, who has released all of director Tarantino's violence-laden films, suggested to the Huffington Post that he, Tarantino, Scorsese, or Scorsese, whatever, and all of us who deal in violence in movies should sit down and discuss our role in that. Are you kidding? All of these directors and producers that have been producing the filth that are responsible for much of what's wrong with your generation and the children today, do you mean to tell me that they are starting to sit down and say, you know, maybe something's wrong with what we're doing. But the pastors of America in these mega churches and churches all around this country aren't asking the same question today. Something's wrong. Something is... Something's wrong. How could it be that the very makers of the filth are saying, you know, I, I think we need to re-examine it. But, but why isn't every church in America today... Why aren't... They're saying, maybe we need to re-examine what we're doing for amusement. Maybe we need to re-examine what we call entertainment. Oh, I know the reason. Churches would say, if I did that, preacher, I'd only have under 100. In less than two weeks, I'd have less than 100 people left that'll say, I'll stand with you, preacher. I'll stand with you. Or at least I'll profess that I'm going to do it. It's financial, isn't it? A lot of it's financial, isn't it? You need some folks willing to live by faith. And to be a preacher today, you live by faith. You really do. Because if you're going to preach the truth of God in this God-forsaken, perverse, adulterous generation, you're going to have to trust God to give you some folks to listen. Amen? The Atlantic Wire says, In the wake of the Aurora shootings, there's a conversation emerging over the amount of violence in the movie industry. And the industry's newest pacifist is also one of its most unlikely, Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein, of all people, wants Hollywood to review the amount of violence that makes its way in the movie. He called for an A-list sit-down to talk about how violence in movies is portrayed in an interview with the Huffington Post. The suggestion may seem a little ludicrous coming from Harvey Weinstein. He and his brother have financed 
some seriously violent fare. He said he's wrestled with some of the more violent scenes presented to him. It's a question that I wrestle with all the time. I've been involved with violent movies, and then I've said at a certain point, I can't take it anymore. Please cut it. My heart goes out to those kids and those families, Weinstein said. You know what they're realizing? They've got blood on their hands. That's what they're realizing. Pray they'll do the right thing. They got souls. They have souls. And until their heart stops beating, we don't know. If the Lord saved Saul, maybe He can save some of these folks. And not just get them saved in eternity, but... We're talking full conversion with discipleship and full of the Holy Ghost. It happened to Paul. Paul was blaspheming and compelling those to blaspheme. He delivered the Christians up to be murdered. And one day they dropped that martyr and his face shone like an angel. And Paul knew, Saul knew in the back of his mind everything that young man said is true. But nevertheless, he just couldn't stand it. And then God had that garment right before he died laid down right at his feet. And he had to look at it. And he went off blaspheming, filled with hatred. But there was something going on in that conscience. And God came and says, it's hard to kick against the pricks. You're getting pricked in your conscience, aren't you? You know what's happening right here, folks? Directors and producers in America are getting pricked in their conscience. And pray that they'll do the right thing. Do the right thing. Oh, the people, though, here's the problem. And I want you to listen to me. The problem is they're like junkies who are having second thoughts about their drug dealing. But everybody's knocking at the door. They created the fix. They created the addiction. They made money off of it. They have fancy cars and boats and all types of things. And they're rich. And these junkies created the addiction. And now they're calling them up. They're coming over to their house. And the people are saying, hey, hey, well, what are you talking about? You know, drugs are good. Give me my drugs. Listen to what the people said about this. Here's one of the responses to Weinstein's uh, second thoughts. Look, Mr. Weinstein, leave our Hollywood movies alone. Movies have already been watered down. The bloodlust of the Americans. They, they created an addiction. The Americans want the blood. They want the gore. And they're saying, shut up about your repentance. We don't want to hear it. It's like when Judas went and repented to the Pharisees and says, I'm done with this. You know, he's got a little bit of remorse about it. It wasn't a full repentance, but he had a little bit of sorrow and remorse. And the Pharisee says, what is that to us? We don't care. The people are saying, we don't care about your conviction. Give us more. Here's another one. At least this fella says, I thought that the violence in the dark night rises is so extreme and realistic that it was sadistic. I'm not sure whether he's against it or not. But at least some people are starting to say, this is insane. This is insanity. What we call entertainment in America. You know, I believe these producers know deep inside that hell awaits. But not just those men. One more. HollywoodReporter.com says legendary director Peter Bogdanovich. He says violence on the screen has increased tenfold. It's almost pornographic. In fact, it is pornographic. Video games are violent too. It's all out of control. I can see where it would drive somebody crazy. You can. You're the one that gave it to America. The fact that these tentpole movies are all violent comic book movies doesn't speak well for our society. Hey, guess what? The adults now read the comic books. They go off to the movie. They're, they're about the mentality of an 11-year-old child in the 1950s reading Batman. That's where your modern 30-year-old person is in America today. He has the maturity level. The 11-year-old in the 1950s probably had a little more self-control. A little more fear of God. He wants to see something blow up. It's the fathers carrying their children because the fathers are deranged and debased in their minds. Obviously, there is violence in the world, says Bogdanovich, and you have to deal with it. 
But there are other ways to do it without showing people getting blown up. Is that right? Well, I'm glad you're admitting it. He says, today there's a general numbing of the audience. I know Christians have been telling you that for 2,000 years. There's too much murder and killing. You make people insensitive by showing it all the time. That's exactly right. The body count in pictures is huge. It numbs the audience into thinking it's not so terrible. That's why now, after watching this stuff every single day, they can have somebody being raped or dead, and they just step right over them and go about their business, you know, pump their gas, do whatever they want, and, and they just ignore it. Well, they hear this every day on TV and movies. I mean, it's just, it just doesn't matter. Back in the 70s, I asked Orson Welles what he thought was happening to pictures. And he said, we're brutalizing the audience. We're going to end up like the Roman circus live at the Colosseum. The respect for human life seems to be eroding. Can you believe this? Legendary directors that have produced some of the most violent and directed some of the most violent films in modern times are admitting we're going back to the Roman circus people. They admit where the train is going. What they're saying is those fundamental preachers have been right all along. That is the train we're on. And what I'm asking right now, how many times, how many times do preachers have to be vindicated? Say, well, you don't have a Ph.D. after your name. You're not a psychologist. You're not this. You're not worldly. Okay, well, what about when all your friends... What about the people that you do respect? What about when they begin to say the preacher's right? Maybe somebody will wake up. Maybe somebody will repent. Maybe you'll save your children. Maybe you'll save your wife. Maybe you'll save your own soul. And what I mean by that is there's lusts that war against the soul, says Peter. And at the judgment seat of Christ... You might be saved in eternity, but at the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to stand and be judged for every idle word, everything you've seen, everything that you've done. And the Lord's not going to say, well done, good and faithful servant to everybody. John Keller at CBS, a political analyst, says, I suspect Bogdanovich has a point here. You do? You liberals are starting to suspect that something's wrong with the movies? Will you come tell my preacher buddies? Will you come tell some of these King James only premillennial Baptist fundamental so-called churches? Will you come into their churches and preach a little bit? If we can at least get the sense of a political analyst for CBS... We'd be blessed in our churches in America. Just go that far. When unbelievably graphic violence is so pervasive, cheered on in movie theaters, and put in the control of kids through those putrid video games, it's not hard to see how the moral calluses that form can, when mixed with a psychologically damaged mind, turn deadly. And when someone who spent their life making movies says it's gone too far, maybe our pop culture tastemakers need to start rethinking the depths they're willing to go to to turn a profit. John Keller, political analyst of CBS, says when the directors and producers themselves start telling you that this is trash, it's dangerous trash, I wouldn't bring my child to see it. I mean, that's pretty much what they're saying. I think it's time to wake up in America. See, it's time for you, manly man. You think you're manly man. And you say, well, I love to watch blood. There's nothing manly about that. In fact, it's, it's effeminate. It's a debased, effeminate, deranged problem you have. Because a man would say, I don't want to see suffering. When I see suffering, I want to jump in the television set and protect whoever's being tortured. I get angry. I can't watch that. Are we going to sit here and pretend that somebody's dying and suffering and just sit here and not do anything? See, it's feminizing the men of America to sit here and say, I love to watch gore. I love to watch suffering. There's nothing manly about that. There's nothing manly about that at all.
Here's a blog where I believe this lady says it just about right. Violent movies, addictive as trans fats and just as dangerous. Trans fats are like margarine and Crisco, which that's another thing when the Bible tells you that butter is what Jesus ate, butter and honey. And it, and it talks about uh, godly dairy like goat's milk and things like that. And then the doctors come with their education and expertise and say, oh no, we've invented this plastic stuff, you know. It's black and we dyed it uh, kind of uh, uh, yellow looking to make it look good for you. And uh, anyway, you know, I've showed you how in the 1920s they sold Crisco and margarine and they gave everybody heart attacks. And then finally then, now they're telling you, uh, now, now you can go to their websites, American Heart uh, Foundation and all these things, and they'll tell you, oh, uh, maybe you better not eat margarine. What, what, excuse me? After your grandparents had passed away? I mean, isn't that crazy? But anyway, that's, that's the same type of propaganda. They're all changing their tune after they kill a whole bunch of people. What they're doing now is they're saying, I think we're wrong about those movies. <laughs> after a generation of ignoring the preachers, look where we're at in America today. And now you're going to tell us that you were wrong and the preachers were right? A shaken young couple in a television interview had survived the Aurora, Colorado movie massacre and saved their four-month-old baby. But what were they doing with a four-month-old baby at a screening of an intense, violent, loud film starring at midnight? Not only that, little six-year-old children. They take little children to see all that violence. And you know what? We just got a phone call last night. A uh, family in our church was downtown handing out tracts. And uh, uh, they were gone before 9.45. But somebody calls and says, what are children doing out handing out tracts at 10 o'clock at night? And she starts cussing and getting all angry on the phone. You know, it was an answer machine, so I didn't have to talk to her. But uh, you know what's amazing? If they would have been lining up at 12 o'clock midnight to see violent, wick, uh, wicked, gross movies, they wouldn't have said one word. They wouldn't have said one word. Even if that child was not watching, the high-intensity soundtrack would be disturbing enough. Oh, I can't imagine what damage it causes to the nerves and intellectual development of a child to go in that type of trash. The dividing line between video games and movies has blurred. Games become movies and movies become games. Americans and American youth are now as addicted to action films as they are to trans fats. Both addictions are equally hard to quit. The question in the wake of the Aurora movie massacre should be, what kind of America do we want? How about an America in which we drug, attention deficit disorder, diagnose kids in response to their diet of sugar? You, you know, you give them a little bit of cane sugar, then they scream and go crazy and can't sit still. What do you expect's going to happen when you give them drugs? I can actually predict it now. I can sit down and watch. If I'm at some store or something and, and they have a little deli bar or something, I can actually predict almost to the time when the explosion is going to happen when the drug hits the kid. What you call sweets or drugs. Now, what kind of America do you want? Do you want to drug them? That's what they're doing. They said, well, they can't sit still. Well, why don't you look at their diet and look what you're setting before their minds. An America desensitized to human suffering and pain because of the numbing effect of movie violence, which no matter how gross is not, after all, real. Oh, but they want it as real as they can get it, don't they? Jack Cafferty, CNN blog, has a big bat Batman picture. And he asked, what should be done about violent movies? You're asking the CNN of all new sites, one of the most liberal of all, is asking what should be done about violent movies? Now, I don't want government censorship because they'll come after the Christian and call you hate crime. But at least they are asking the question. It's a moral question. But you know what? When he asked this question, you can see the bloodlust of the people. They all began to use this common argument. And wherever I read, whatever news site, whatever blog, this argument keeps coming up. Notice what it was. Nothing should be done about it. Did Adolf Hitler watch violent movies? Here's another one. Hello, last time I checked, Hitler didn't have cable. Really? 
Are you sure about that? Gerwin Strobel in the swastika and the stage says it was no accident that references to a new cultic theater should have been so common in the Third Reich. Sections of the Nazi party were in effect trying to create a new religion. Sounds like Anton LaVey, doesn't it? And we're hoping to use the theater. It led SS dramatist Frederick Bethge to warn against the closure of the theaters in the final stages of the war, saying it would drive the middle classes into another kind of religious site where we would prefer not to see them, namely the churches. A bunch of Nazis said, don't close the theaters. They'll have a religious revival and go back to church. We want to keep them in our propaganda machines. We want to keep them in the new church. If that doesn't show you that propaganda masters use movies as your new religion, I don't know what else could prove it to you. What does that mean then if Christians are going to church and going to the movies? They're in two different worlds, right? Unless the whole church has just been taken over by that culture. If the whole church has been taken over by that culture, it's just an extension of the theater. One of the more telling books about the Third Reich is from Albert Speer, Inside the Third Reich. He was Hitler's chief architecture. He was there. He was there. He tells you what happens every night, what it was like living with Hitler as Hitler's chief architecture. He says, everyone settled in easy chairs. The lights slowly dimmed and the first movie began. There we sat, mute for some three or four hours. We stood up stiff and dazed. Hitler at last said goodnight at about two o'clock in the morning. For you children that should know, Hitler was the terrible dictator that lived uh, in the first part of our century. And uh, brought in the Second World War, and he murdered all types of people and was a terrible, terrible leader, one of the worst ever in history. But listen to what Spears says. Hitler at last said goodnight about 2 o'clock in the morning. Hitler did not want to have this daily routine disturbed. He was fond of it. So what did he do every day? For two or three hours, sat and watched movies. That's what they're doing. While people are being murdered, he's sitting over there in a trance. Every single day. Several times he went to the Metropole Theater with plenty of scantily clad girls. Other historians showed how addicted to pornography Hitler was as a youth. Hitler squandered his working time, wasted time until the early hours of the evening. Speer goes on to say how mind-numbing it was to have to sit there every day and just stare at those movies. He was devil-possessed, wasn't he? Albert Speer goes on to say, Every evening a crude movie projector was set up. The choice of films were usually the same ones being shown in the Berlin movie houses at the time. Movies with lots of lewd display. Frequently we saw foreign films, including those that were withheld from the German public. The standard practice was to watch two new movies every day. The habit of seeing one or two films every evening continued until the beginning of the war. Neither Baroque nor classical music interested Hitler. Of course it didn't. Because that teaches the reverence and joy of God. Devil-possessed person doesn't want to hear Bach. You understand what I'm saying? What you need to also remember about these movies that Hitler viewed. This was pre-code Hollywood. And you would not believe some of the 20s and 30s, uh, it's about like today, so I guess you would believe it. Uh, films in the 1920s and early 30s included lewd innuendo, infidelity, abortion, intense violence, homosexuality. Gangsters in the films were portrayed as heroic. Nefarious characters were seen to profit from their deed. So here's Hitler, addicted to movies filled with lust, evil, where the villain and evil person of the movie is celebrated as a hero. And it produces one of the greatest monsters in history. So maybe these fellas need to go back again that said, well, Hitler didn't have horrible movies. You want to make a bet? Not only that, the SS members 
We're taught to get attached to animals. And once they're attached, to kill it. I know that's horrible. And there's other things that I can't even tell you. But what were they doing to their people? What were they doing to their soldiers? Desensitizing them, right? He wanted to generate Hitler's youth. They alienated them from their parents. They wanted a nation of devil-possessed people devoted to Hitler that would kill, maim, torture whoever he told them to. They also exposed these children to terrible acts of violence. Why did they do that? Why did they show them over and over and over and program them with terrible acts of violence? Same thing. Same thing. What are they doing in America today? That's why it's so easy for people to control these youth. Put them on drugs. Show them these horrible acts of violence over and over and over. They can make them do whatever they want. The devil certainly can. Pre-Hitler Germany had become fascinated with the occult. I've documented that before. Many of the early forefathers warned that when a nation turns to a cult, horrible things are going to happen like Hitler. The Salem witch trials were a manifestation of a cult revival. And uh, it led to those horrible witch trials. But what many don't realize is pre-Hitler Germany was fascinated with violence and rape being mixed together in their comic books, in their literature... They were fascinated with the subject. George Victor and Hitler, The Pathology of Evil, shows how Hitler was addicted to pornography. Now, that gets rid of the common excuse that people are using. Evil things happen in the world. Hitler happened. There were no horrible movies in that day and age. Well, they were wrong. They were wrong. Before even trying to debate that, which we could in a hundred different ways, uh, the, the simple answer to that is you're wrong. Hitler is a perfect example of what happens when you so, show soldiers and desensitize them by making them look at violent, horrible things, what it does to their mind. And they analyze in whatever, quote, mental health researchers uh, it's just a bunch of hocus-pocus mess. But nevertheless, they took some of those soldiers and they found out they weren't mentally ill, whatever that word means. They found out they were sane. Well, how did all those people murder for Hitler? Mass propaganda. Mass propaganda. Desensitizing the people. Well, what do you do? When you've got all these producers and directors warning, what do you do? What are Christians going to do with it? What are they going to do? Go see the next Batman movie? Go see the next trash that Hollywood puts out? How long are you going to stay in that mess? You know what? I can tell you right now, the truth of the matter is, I'm standing right where I'm standing here today because I saw where my generation was going. I've said it before. I'm going to say it one more time. I was in a place I should not be, with people I should not have been around. And when I saw Metallica and Slayer videos, these horrible rock bands, stand up and say on that video as I watched these horrible people around me, and I watched them say, we all await the coming of Antichrist. And I saw all the people scream and go crazy in the crowd and start chanting Satan's name. And I sat over there in a the corner and I said, what train did I get on? I'm not lying to you. I said, what, what, what train am I on? I've heard enough about the book of Revelation to know that this is, whoa, wait a second. This is far beyond anything I wanted to get into. And then all of a sudden, everybody began to put in movies like Faces of Death and Gore Flicks. And I watched these people laugh like a bunch of brute beast animals at some of the most sick, vile, real stuff that anybody could ever put. And they were laughing, making fun of it. And at that moment, it led to my awakening where I said, uh-uh, this is where it's going. It's going to real stuff. All this fake everything, it's going to reality TV. 
And that's exactly where it ended up, you know. It took 20 years, but this is what everybody wants today. They want it as real as they can get it, do they not? Well, what are you going to do with Ted Bundy? Mass murderer. Serial killer. Hours before his execution. Had a warning to society. He said, when you have this trash and this literature and these movies filled with lewdness and violence, he said, I can't describe the power it has over a person. And before he died, capital punishment, he uttered this chilling warning to society that says, if you, unless you want a world filled with Ted Bundy's. You better re-examine the trash you're viewing as entertainment. What do you do with that? What do people do? So l l let me get this straight. We have mass murderers warning against it on their deathbed. We have psychologists, directors, actors, producers questioning it. We've seen Satanists boast of its power. And we've seen our Christian forefathers do everything they can but pull their hair out to try to warn you. Now what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to sigh, roll your eyes? You can wake up or you can remain in the dark. The dark night arises. Well, you got that right. N-I-G-H-T. The Holy Spirit says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. What's Paul say? He said, Wake up! For some have not the knowledge of God. If you thought about who God is, you'd be ashamed. People walk around with little stickers and things and said, what would Jesus do? What would you do if Jesus sat right next to you? Oh, I was reading my Bible, Lord. I was. Let's read the Bible, Lord. Why do you want to have a Bible study now? The Holy Ghost is inside of you. The Bible said you defile the temple of God. Him shall God destroy. That's the church and your body. I speak to your shame. And as I close, you know, just bringing all this together, it reminds me of the so-called Batman. It really does. This nation is becoming a people that are as blind as a bat. I know they say bats aren't really blind, but you know what? They certainly love darkness. They dwell in caves. And you know, the people are becoming like a bunch of bats. Have you thought about that? They love darkness. Look at Luke 8. When he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time. And what's the first sign of devil possession? He what? He wore no clothes. So you might not be devil possessed, but to the degree that you have devils influencing you and you're yielding to them, you want to expose your flesh. Neither abode in any house but in the what? Tombs. He liked death. The more this youth gets into these games and dark imagery, what do they want to do? They want to walk around with skulls. They want to pierce themselves. They love death. They love gloomy, morbid topics. Despair. Oh, well, that fits great with the nihilism, fits great with this evolutionary, humanistic death culture that we've taught these children in our public schools of America. Isaiah says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light, light for darkness, and put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. They always put some little moral 
stance, some, some little moral ending, some little moral theme in these movies to justify all the nudity and violence. Hey, pornography figured that out years ago. Just put some news articles in there to give people justification to view it. You don't think European news understands that right now? So you can pretend you're reading news? Do you understand that they're not stupid? They know what they're doing? And I wonder if Christians, I wonder, I wonder what it's going to take in America to get Christians to put away their idols. God have mercy on us. Amen? Jesus said, this is condemnation that light has come into the world and men love what? Darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So there's two things you could do. You can be a bat and you can stay with your darkness and your despair and continue to watch the trash. But don't you say a word when this stuff begins to come closer to home. Ephesians 5 says, You were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. If God's called you out of the darkness, if God has called you out of the darkness, you're now a Christian. You're now a believer. Walk like one. Walk like one. And I'm calling everyone right now that hears this message. I'm calling you for the sake of your children, for the sake of your country, for the sake of your God, for the sake of your soul. I'm calling you to put away your idols. To choose right now whether you're going to serve Baal or whether you're going to serve God. Whether you're going to be a Christian and live like one. Or whether you're going to be a friend of the world and an enemy of God. Get rid of this double-minded stuff. And I pray if you'll put it away, you'll let me know. Give me a testimony that others might be encouraged. Because Anton LaVey of the church of Satan boasted and said, you people aren't going to put it away because we have you afraid. We have you afraid not to watch TV. We have you afraid not to watch the latest movie because you don't want to be different. And Anton LaVey said, we have you because you're not brave enough or bold enough to be different. It's the new ultimate sin to not be in the crowd that views it. And I wonder if anybody will stand up to him. I wonder if some Christians will stand up and say, I'm not afraid. I don't have a TV. I'm not afraid to tell you my children never watched any of that trash. They've never seen bugs, but they've never seen any of that mess. You call me whatever you want to call me. I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid to tell you. And I pray you'll stand up, not be afraid. Amen? How about getting some men in this generation that'll stand up and say, I'm not afraid. I mean, come on, you don't got to take the sledgehammer to the local theater. But at least, how about your house? All right, let's have a call to repentance right now. Brother Scott, please. Some of you want to come up and pray for yourself, pray for your families. Pray for, pray for others that you know. Pray for your grandchildren. Pray for whoever. Let's take a few moments and talk to our God and ask God to please send His grace upon us. Tell God we're sorry for whatever we've done. Tell God you're sorry for how you might have hindered the Spirit hindered revival in this church, hindered prayers. I don't know. Sometimes there's sin in the camp. Sometimes there's some Achans. And they're doing a whole lot of sinning in, in, in secret. Who knows what's happening in our church, why some prayers aren't being answered. But maybe today, God, I have mercy. Maybe you'll give up some of that pornography, some of that trash, some of them secret things that you think nobody knows. God knows. Probably the government does too. Everybody knows. May the Lord bless you in your repentance. God help us. Be a doers, not just hearers.
Don't agree and say amen and then go back to your vomit. It's hard to give up an addiction. It does hurt. There is pain. But if you suffer with Him, you'll reign with Him. You'll be glad you did. Help them, Lord. Help us all in this generation to stay pure and holy. That we might have your power and fellowship and joy. And hear that well done, good and faithful servant. For the children, Lord. For the grandchildren. God, the things that are inside the homes of the people, the things that they view, the torture, the suffering, the nudity, the occultism, the families out of order. God, have mercy. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive our churches. Forgive the preachers, God who have not been men. They've been afraid. They've been afraid of their people. They've been afraid of suffering, afraid of living by faith. The fathers are afraid. They're timid, Lord, weak. The women are afraid to be different. Afraid to deal with the mother-in-law or whoever it might be. Just society in general. The children are growing up weak and afraid. And if the parents are afraid, it's no wonder the children are insecure and lack boldness. Dear Father, I pray that You would cleanse some hearts, cleanse some families, cleanse some churches, that we might have Your mercy, that You might answer our prayers, that our goals and our vision might be accomplished and not hindered. Let there be some real repentance today. And not just for a week or two, Lord, but let it last. In Jesus' name, Amen.